This is just a quick update on the Enigma machine. I've started putting together the reflector. Um, this is the, the body of it here. And to be able to assemble this, basically the reflector has the um, springy pins on it. So if you look at the book here, this is the reflector which goes on the left hand side of the machine. The rotors would go in here between the reflector and the entry wheel. So the reflector has springy pins on it and then each of the rotors has flat contacts on one side and spring pins on the other side. The entry wheel has flat contacts on it. Um, this book by the way, if you want to know what the insides of the Enigma look like, this is a great book. Um, believe it's available on um, Professor Dom's website. I'll see if I can find the link to it and put it in the description. But as you can see this is this is a real reflector. Mine's similar, it's not exactly the same because I've got various limitations on how I can actually put this machine together, but this will function. Um, these parts, these rotors aren't built in any way to be compatible with a real Enigma machine because I don't have a real Enigma machine to put them in. So making them compatible didn't didn't really matter. Um, they are made to the right dimensions, so physically they are the same with minor differences. But to put together the the reflector, I have of course all of the little springy pins, the little pogo pins. And I've got my printed circuit board and to be able to assemble this I 3d printed a little a little jig which lets me put the the circuit board into it uh, it's a bit tricky at the moment because all the pins are there but the circuit board fits in there and then you put the pins through from this side because the heads of the pins are actually bigger on the end and uh, for this to work correctly, when the cover's on, I need the front of the circuit board to be flush. So all the pins are soldered from the back. So the pins are all soldered in now. Obviously I have to do the cross wiring on them. But if we take it out of the jig, you can see there's the faceplate off the, the reflector. Um, so the reflector then fits into here like this and then the cover plate goes on. Now it's worth mentioning that these only fit on in one direction because there's 26 contacts whoops, 26 contacts around the outside but only three mounting screws so it's not symmetrical you, you have to get it the correct way up which I believe is like like that so we should be able to fit that on there. So once I put the screws in there, that's basically the, the reflector done after I've done the wiring. And you can see how that will fit in the machine. And this is one of the rotors. Um, the reflector effectively pushes up against the side of the rotor like that. Uh, it's not going to do it at the moment because of the, the contacts are missing. The way these contacts will work is I've done that in two pieces. So I'm using flat copper rivets that get pushed through and then I'm going to solder wires to the uh, to the backs of those. I'll probably do that before I push them through the, the plastic so I don't melt the plastic. Um, which means I'll have to solder the wire coming out the middle off this little rivet but that shouldn't be too hard to do and then there is a cover which fits over the top again this will only actually fit one way but just to demonstrate um, this is all a very tight press fit together so you, ha you have to deburr all the holes very carefully so that these contacts will actually fit through but when that's all pushed together correctly. 
more or less like that. Uh, those contacts should be flush. And then what I may do is just slightly wet sand this to get it all nice and smooth. I find using PLA you can wet sand it with a little bit of vegetable oil and that works reasonably well. Um, but you can see how those copper contacts will make a connection with the pins. Hopefully. That's going to be interesting to see how reliable those connections are going to be. The, the little jig I make here, I've made a similar one for when I need to solder the pins into the rotor. Uh, this was one of my original rotors. This isn't correct. I've had to remodel this to make sure that there is uh, room in this for the heads of these pins to actually push fully flush. They need to push all the way down. So I had to make the, the holes big enough to, to accommodate the heads there. But the next thing to do, uh, once I do the cross wiring on this, is do the wiring on the plug board. I also want to do the entry wheel, which is arranged in a similar way to this. And then I can start on the rotors. So it is worth noticing the way the lettering works on these. So if you've got A at the top, your A pin will be at the top there. And then it actually goes B, C, D around that way. So I'll have to be very careful when I do the wiring to make sure I've got my orientation correct and make sure I get the wiring going in the right direction. I'll probably do a little diagram to help myself with that. But progress is being made slowly. I've gone ahead and wired up the circuit board for the reflector. Uh, this is reflector B. I went ahead and wrote out what all the, the pins are and also drew a little diagram just showing what the, the connections are. I also had to mark on the board, because this is the back of the board, which pin was A, uh, which is the top pin. So that top pin matches that mounting hole, which you can see matches the, the top of the reflector housing, the body here. So the wiring's just crisscrossed, it just has to be out of the way of the central hole and the little mounting mounting points and if I'd been smart I would have actually put the screen printing on this side and actually put the letters on there that would make it a lot easier so when or if I get another set of boards made I will definitely add the lettering to the board just to make it a bit easier and I was very careful to go through and every time I made a connection I buzzed it out with my multimeter which actually means you end up checking everything twice because obviously it's pairs of pins. So with that all wired up and checked, that should now if I'm looking here, that'll drop into there and sit flush because I've got the wires out of the way. Um, you can see I actually got the the screen printing on this board technically upside down. Um, not that it matters because nobody's ever going to see it because the cover goes on. I think it should be like that. And I just need to make sure everything's lined up and none of the pins are bent so that they all still press into the housing fine. And then I can go ahead and add the little screws there. So this is the finished reflector B. Uh, you can see how the pins all stick through there and they're all free to move and they, they'll go flush with the with the cover. Uh, you can check none of them are binding up by pressing the whole thing down. I went through and rechecked all of the connections and also made sure there weren't any short circuits because a short circuit in there would make your Enigma machine do all sorts of strange things. So that piece is now hopefully finished. So to show where this finished reflector goes, I've pulled out the machine. I have removed the rotor stack out of the middle of it. Uh, with that removed, you can actually see how 
the little levers that move the rotors around work when you press a key. You see they move up and that's what engages in the little ratchet wheels on the back of the rotors to push them around. The reflector, which is here, lives on this shaft at the, the left hand side of the machine. Uh, this little pin just keeps it all uh, from rotating, so that's what it slides on. So it slides backwards and forwards, and these ramps on the back of it are how it moves in and out uh, as you move this lever. So this lever has these little pieces that that these ramps ride on. So you can see that sort of pushes them forwards and that's what puts the tension on the whole rotor stack to make the connections. So that's the reflector in place now. You can see I'm missing the cover from the entry wheel but one thing I can do when I start wiring this up is I can actually wire up the, the keyboard and the lamp board and the plug board as well and the entry wheel and then I can test it by holding the reflector hard up against those contacts and I should then be able to press a key on the keyboard and they have the the letter that the reflector changes it to show up on the lamp board here. So that'll be something to try before I go ahead and start wiring up all of these rotors.